it's time to start our last unit. Um, just so you're aware, after this unit we'll have another test and then we're going to come up with some sort of a final exam. We'll probably spend about a week or two uh, doing some prep work with the exam, um, but that's kind of where we want to finish up. We want to be able to write a grade 12 exam so that you're at least a little bit ready for calculus next year. Okay, um, the last unit may be, well, I'm not going to say the easiest, but it's kind of, it's kind of fun in a way. Um, pretty much every question in this unit will start with how many ways. It's basically counting. The problem is you have to figure out the complexities of some of these counting situations. All right, the math is easy. It's going to be, can you understand what the question is asking? All right, let's see what we have here. First unit, first lesson. The fundamental counting principle. I think you probably know what this is, maybe if you've never called it this before though. Let me give you the example. A fan has three settings. Okay, so let's picture a fan here. Okay, and it has this, you know, it has the switch here and it has three settings. You can either turn it off, you can turn it on low, or you can turn it on high. How many ways are there to set three fans? Okay, so you got three of them. Let's think about those three fans. What could you set the first fan at? Well, we could set it off, let's say. In fact, we could set turn all three fans off. This would be one way to set the three fans. Okay, we could try off, off, and maybe this time we'll turn this one on low. That would be another way. We could go off, off, high. That would be another way. This question is saying, how many ways can you rearrange these fans so that you have different settings each time? Okay, now if you think about this, if we keep going through this pattern, you know, maybe our next one will be this time we'll turn this one on low. Okay, that would be another one. Or maybe we'll turn the first one on low. That would be another one. And we can keep going like this. There are quite a few possibilities. There's got to be a shortcut. All right, the shortcut is what we call the fundamental counting principle. If you think about this, we have three fans. How many different settings could you put on the first fan? Three. You could have off, low, or high. How many different settings could you put on the second fan? Again, three. How many different settings could you put on the third fan? Three. So each fan has three settings. But every time we change one setting, say on the first fan, it gives us a new situation without even changing the second one. So what we have to do here is we have to multiply. This tells us there are 27 ways, 27 ways to set the three fans. That's the fundamental counting principle. If there are n plus one different objects, in one set and n two different objects in the second set, if we multiply them, we get how many ways are of choosing both. Okay, so that's the key. How many ways are there? And let's multiply them. So let's try a banking account. You guys, every one of you have made a password. Do you ever wonder why they ask you to put, you know, capital letters, small letters, maybe a number in there? Because each one of those makes it have one more, um, possibility for your outcome and it gives you lots of different total outcomes. So let's look at this one. It says a password has to have two letters followed by five digits. Okay, so it's going to look like this. These first two are letters. How many letters are there in the alphabet? There are 26. Okay, it says all letters can be used more than once. That means we can repeat the letter. So how many letters could I put in the second spot? 26 again. Okay, and then there are digits. How many digits are there? Okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because you have to include zero. And since we can repeat, it's going to be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. All right, 26 times 26, I think that's 576. Let's quickly grab the calculator to make sure. 
By the way, this entire unit is a calculator unit. Oh, 676. And then there are five zeros. So 67 million ways to have a um, have a password here. By the way, just as a side note, if we would say that there has to be one capital letter, that means instead of 26, you would actually have 52 possibilities here. So you can see why just by throwing something like putting a capital letter in, it gives you many, many, many more possibilities overall. Okay, let's try the next one. How many different license plates? All right. This doesn't include custom license plates. It just says three letters. So these three are letters and then numbers. So how many letters are there? 26. How many numbers are there? Okay, so let's try that. Pretty big number. Seventeen million ways. Okay. Let's try the next one. How many four digit even numbers can be made using the two the digits? Okay, this one's a little different. Alright. Um, we're supposed to make a four digit number. All right, and this is a little bit tricky. How many letters, how many numbers, sorry, can you put into the first spot? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven possibilities for the first position. Okay, how many can go in the second spot? Well, this is different because the previous question just says you can use the three numbers. Here it says, you got to use these numbers here. So let's, for example, let's say we use the number five in the first spot. How many letters are left? Or sorry, numbers left. Now there's only six left. And then if let's say we use the four, then there are only four left. Sorry, five left. And let's say we use the eight that time. Now you only have four. Okay. So let's put a little note here. If there is a list given you cannot repeatedly use the items from the list unless it says so. Okay, so this one's going to be a little different. By the way, um, you should get in the habit of trying to do this in your head. I know you can use a calculator for the test, but let, I mean, let's try this. Okay, think about it this way. Let's do 6 times 5. That would be 30. What's 7 times 30? That would be 210. And then if we multiply that by 4, you get 840. Okay. Try to find ways to group it so that you can multiply them in your head, if possible. I wouldn't expect you to do the previous one in your head. Okay, next one. How many five-letter words can be formed using the letters and factor? Here again, they're listing the numbers, or sorry, the letters. So we can only use them from there. So how many choices do I have for the first letter? I have six. Then after I've used one, there will be five, used one again, used one again, used one again. Okay, can we do this in our head? Well, what's six times five? That's 30. What's 30 times four? That's 120. What's 120 times three? That's 360. What's 360 times two? 720. All right, just a couple more. All right, so you kind of now seen the basic fundamental counting principle. What we're going to start doing now is give you some conditions. 
Okay, so it says there's a six-letter word, and it says it must begin with F and end with a vowel. So these are conditions. Whenever you're given conditions, you should show them. Or, sorry, you need to do them first. Do the conditions first. And by the way, I just said show them. Why am I writing this out like this? This is you showing your thinking. These questions, if you just write the number, if you just wrote 720, even though it's correct, you would only get one out of two marks here. Okay? You have to show where the answers are coming from. So how many six-letter words begin with F? Well, how many ways can I begin with F? There's only one F. How many ways can I end with a vowel? Well, looking here, there are two vowels, so there's two possibilities. Okay? So now I have used the F, and I have used one of the vowels. I don't know which one. Let's say it's the O. How many letters are left for this spot? There are four. And now times three, times two, times one. Doing this in our head, we get 12, 24, 48 possibilities. Okay, so that one's pretty basic. This one is much more difficult. This is guaranteed to be on a test at some point, and it's quite a difficult question. Okay, so let's take a look at why it's difficult. I think it's the last one of the day, yep. It says a five-digit even number. Okay, so let's write a five-digit number here. How do we make a number even? Well, is this number even? Is this number even? As long as we have an even number in the last digit, the whole number is even. So here is our first condition that we need to deal with. What numbers could go there? 2, 4, 6, 8, or 0. There are five possibilities here. Okay? So then, now that we've done that, how many choices are here? Well, let's say we've used one of these numbers. Let's say we use the 2. Okay, that's the number we chose in the first part. How many choices are there here? Well, I could use the 1, the 3, the 4, the 5, the 6, the 7, the 8, the 9, and the 0. Can you start a number with a 0? If we wrote a number 0, 1, 3, 6, 8, is that a 5-digit number? No. You would write it like that. So I can't use a 0 here. And this creates a big problem. Because what if, instead of using the 2, what if I used a 0 here in the first thing I looked at? Well, then, instead of there only being 8 possibilities here, there would be 9 possibilities. Right? Because if I have these, I only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 possibilities. But if I use a 0 first, then I would have these numbers available. And this would be 9. So this is not how we do this question. Okay? Whenever you have this ambiguity where there's a 0, where you could use it here, but you can't use it here, we have to do two cases. Okay? So let's try it this way. So in case 1, I'm going to use a 0 to make it even. By putting a zero in the end spot, I will have an even number. Then how many choices do I have for the first number? So then I could use the one, two, all the way to nine. There are nine possibilities here. That leaves eight, seven, six. Okay, now what if I use the two, four, six, or eight here? That will also make it even. But because of this, I only have eight choices here because I can't use the zero here. Okay? So get that. If I use the zero on the end, I have nine possibilities here. If I don't use the zero here, I only have eight possibilities here. Okay? And now how many numbers could go in this spot? Okay? This is a little tricky. Remember, here are the numbers we could use.
we've used one of the even numbers there. Let's say we use the 4. We used another number, any of them, not a 0. Let's say we used a 5. How many are left now? 8, and then 7, and then 6. Okay, so now we're going to multiply 9 times 8 times 7 times 6. That's 3,024. And then we're going to go 8 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 4. And there is 10,000. 752. What do we do with those two numbers? Well, when we have two cases, we're saying this or this. We got one of these cases. So if I want to look at the total number, I'm going to add. Anytime you have or, you're adding. Okay? So this is 13,776. All right? So, let's give you some trial questions. And of course, try the multiple choice. There's a couple of tricky questions in there. I'm going to guess that you guys have questions about this, okay? When you get there, if you're not sure, make sure you send me a message. More than any other unit, there are some questions in this unit that you will never see in the notes and they just come up once or twice, make sure you do your homework questions. Okay? Ask me if you're not sure. Good luck.